Okay, so who hasn't spent, you know, a little too much time scrolling through YouTube and thought, wait, could I do this? Could I make money from my videos? Right. It's like the ultimate side hustle dream, right? Totally. So that's what we're diving into today, folks. The sometimes mysterious, often misunderstood world of YouTube's partner program, YPP. It's the holy grail for a lot of creators. For sure. And get this, we managed to snag an interview with Thomas Kim. No way. Yes way. Director of creator monetization at YouTube. He's like the wizard behind the curtain, making sure those creator payouts actually happen. Talk about an insider perspective. Mm -hmm. I was so excited to hear we had him lined up for this deep dive. Me too. So the YPP, it's been around since, get this, 2007. Wow, really? Yep. That's what, almost two decades of creators building careers, entire businesses, just from sharing their passions online. That's wild. And some of those OG creators are still earning money today. I know, right? Like, talk about serious staying power. And Kim really emphasized this idea of partnership. You know, it's not just YouTube saying, here's a platform, good luck. It's about them actively supporting creators, helping them succeed, because their success is totally tied to, well, everyone making awesome content. Right, they're invested in this ecosystem thriving. Exactly. But here's the thing I always wonder, I, I mean, YouTube is huge E. Millions upon millions of channels, right? Is there even room anymore for someone new to break through? Like, is it already too crowded to make a real go of it? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. Well, Kim actually dropped some stats that completely blew my mind. Get ready for this. Over 3 million channels are currently part of the YPP. No way. Way. And hold on, it gets even crazier. Over the past three years, YouTube has paid out a mind-boggling $70 billion right. to creators, media companies, music partners, the whole ecosystem. $70 billion. With a B. With a B. I don't even know what to do with that number. That's like the GDP of a small country. Right. It really puts things in perspective. So yeah, there's definitely room at the table. Wow. Okay. I'm going to need a minute to process that. Okay, my mind is officially blown. $70 billion. But uh, how do we get a piece of that pie? Like, what are the actual ways creators can turn their, you know, their creativity into cold, hard cash through the YPP? Right, because it's not like you just get accepted and then, boom, money magically appears in your bank account. Although, that would be nice. Sign me up for that. Uh-huh, right. <laughs> but seriously, Kim broke down the different revenue streams, and it's actually a pretty diverse menu. Which is great because it means creators have options. Ooh, a monetization menu. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Okay, so first up, you've got your classic ad revenue share. This is probably what most people think of first, right? Yeah. YouTube runs ads on your videos and you get a cut of the revenue. Okay, yeah, that's the one everyone's heard of. The famous 5545 split, right? Yep, exactly. For most videos, that's the breakdown. Creators keep 55% of the ad revenue generated from their content. But there is a bit of a twist when it comes to shorts. Ah, uh, shorts, it's a whole other world, right? Right. Because music is so integral to shorts, YouTube had to come up with a different revenue sharing model to make sure the artists and rights holders get their fair share. Yeah, that makes sense. Can't be giving away free music left and right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, but that's just one revenue stream. Let's talk about fan funding. This yeah. is where you're building those direct relationships with your most dedicated viewers. You know, your super fans. We're talking channel memberships, super chats, things like that. Oh yeah, I've seen creators offer some pretty cool perks for their members, like special emojis, exclusive content, even early access to new videos. It's a cool way to build a little community within your audience. For sure, and Kim highlighted creators like Emily D. Baker, who focuses on legal content, and she's mentioned before that she's not always comfortable monetizing that type of content with ads, which, you know, Totally understandable. Right, it wouldn't be very appropriate to have like a personal injury lawyer ad popping up in the middle of a video about a serious legal issue. Uh-huh, exactly. But she's found huge success with fan funding. And the best part is, creators often get to keep a bigger chunk of the revenue, sometimes up to 70%, depending on the platform and the specific features they're using. Wow, that 70-30 split definitely sounds appealing. Right. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> Next on the menu, we've got shopping. This is a great avenue for creators who have, you know, those really engaged audiences who might be interested in, in checking out products they feature. So think affiliate links, merch shelves, like you're watching a video about, say, making the perfect cup of coffee, and boom, there's a link to buy the exact coffee maker the creator is using. Oh, I am so guilty of clicking on those. It's dangerous, haha. -ha. But also super smart for creators. Totally. And last but not least, 
we can't forget about YouTube Premium. This one sometimes flies under the radar, yeah. but every time someone subscribes to Premium, a portion of that subscription fee actually goes directly to the creators whose content they watch even if they're skipping ads. Oh, that's cool. So even if viewers are trying to avoid those ad breaks, creators still benefit. I like it. It's a win-win. And that's really what's so great about this multifaceted approach to monetization. It gives creators the flexibility to choose the methods that feel right mm -hmm. for them, for their content, for their audience. Yeah. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. I love that. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. The what, the why, the potential, how much. But uh, I gotta ask, what about the challenges? I mean, getting into the YPT is one thing, but actually building a sustainable career on YouTube, that's gotta be a whole other beast. Oh, for sure. It's definitely not a walk in the park. It takes strategy, dedication, and definitely a good dose of resilience. Okay, speaking of strategy, let's talk about the YouTube algorithm, everyone's favorite topic. Right, everyone thinks it's this big mystery. Exactly, and there's this whole thing about like, if you don't have ads enabled on every single video, the algorithm will bury you. Like it's some secret handshake for getting your content seen. Oh yeah, I've heard that one too. But Kim was very clear about this, it's a myth. Right. Yeah, he emphasized that the algorithm is designed to connect viewers with content they'll actually enjoy, regardless of the monetization. So it's not just about like shoving ads in people's faces? None at all. Oh. It's about the quality of the content, the engagement, the relevance to the audience. Those are the things that really matter. Okay, that's good to know. It's less about gaming the system and more about just creating awesome stuff, which honestly feels a lot more sustainable in the long run. Yeah. Totally. And while we're debunking myths, can we talk about mid-roll ads for a second? Oh, those things. Right. I'll admit, I've been known to click that skip ad button a time or two, or 10. Oh yeah, me too. Especially when they come in at the worst possible moment, like just when things are getting good. The worst. <laughs> but Kim talked about how YouTube is constantly refining its ad system, you know, trying to find that balance. What do you mean balance? Well, it's about making sure the ads are effective for creators, obviously, but also that they're not completely disruptive to the viewing experience. Okay, yeah, no one wants to be bombarded with ads every five seconds. Exactly. And Kim actually pointed out that, you know, trying to cram as many ads as humanly possible into your videos can actually backfire. How so? Well, it can make viewers feel like they're just being sold to rather than actually entertained or informed. And that can lead to them clicking away, disengaging, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of what you want. Right. It's all about finding that sweet spot. Exactly. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier about focusing on the quality of your content. If people are genuinely invested in what you're creating, they'll be much more likely to stick around, even with a few strategically placed ads. So it's not just about chasing those ad dollars. No, not at all. It's about building a community, connecting with your audience, sharing your passion. And hopefully getting rewarded for it. Exactly. Well, on that note, I think we've covered just about everything we can about the YouTube Partner Program, from the different ways creators can earn money, to the importance of creating high-quality content, to the ever-evolving landscape of the platform itself. It's definitely a dynamic world, but also incredibly exciting. Absolutely. So if you're out there listening to this and you've got that entrepreneurial itch, that creative spark, don't let it fizzle out. Dive in, experiment, find your voice, build your community. And who knows, maybe someday we'll be deep diving into your YouTube success story. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next time.